Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be coding the Simpsons 3 8 rule in Python. Let's briefly recall what the Simpsons 3 8 rule is first. This numerical integration method allows us to approximate a definite integral. In this numerical integration technique, we fit a series of cubic polynomials to our data and sum together the area underneath each cubic, and that allows us to approximate definite integrals. The schematic here should make this more clear. I'm going to be coding this in PyCharm, which is a free, downloadable, integrated design environment. Let's begin by creating a new file. Then, we need to import our relevant Python libraries. As we are going to both be approximating the definite integral and also graphing our function, we're going to use three Python libraries. We're going to be using NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. Let's come to our interpreter in the bottom right here. As you can see, it says Simpsons 3.8 rule, as that is what we created initially. Let's click this and hit interpreter settings. This is very important, as if you have the wrong interpreter selected, Python won't recognize your packages that you want to download. You can change your interpreter up at the top here. Once we have the right interpreter selected, let's click on this small plus sign down here. We will then search for NumPy, select it, and click Install Package. Then we will repeat the same thing for Matplotlib and SciPy. Now that all of our relevant Python packages are installed, let's close this window. We now need to import the packages into our Python file. So let's type in import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and lastly we say from scipy interpolate import interp1d as that is all we need from the scipy library. Next we need to create two function definitions one for the function that we are approximating the definite integral for, and another optional function for its fourth derivative if you wish to find the maximum error. Both these functions will take in some value, x, and return the result of our function. I found this fourth derivative using a derivative calculator, for which I will leave a link in the description down below. Let's now list some required parameters. We have our lower integration bound, a, our upper integration bound, b, and our number of equally spaced subintervals, n. Just remember that we need to use a multiple of three subintervals, as each cubic will be fit over three subintervals. Then lastly, let's initialize an iteration variable that we will use shortly. Then, let's make this formula to find our step size, dx. It is simply our total integrating distance over our number of subintervals. Next, we are going to create two variables, x and y. Imagine these as a table of our data points. This numpy linspace function for our x variable is simply saying, beginning at a, our lower integration bound, and ending at b, our upper integration bound, create n plus one equal points. We will use n plus one here, as the number of inputs is always one more than our number of subsections. Using our newly created x and y variables, we can now implement our Simpsons 3 8 rule now. We just have our step size times 3 over 8 times all of this here. These middle terms may look a bit confusing, but they are just implementing the 3 3 2 repeating pattern that is present in the Simpsons 3 8 rule. Printing these terms and our y array, we get the following. As you can see, each of these sum terms is just picking every third value such that we maintain the 3, 3, 2 pattern that we just talked about. Then in the actual Simpsons 3, it's rule here, these all get added together using the sum function. Next, let's add in a way of calculating the maximum error of our Simpsons 3, it's rule. This section will be finding the maximum fourth derivative 
of our function that will then be plugged into the following formula. Our 1D matrix of x4 prime here is just saying that within the bounds, a to b, create an arbitrary amount of inputs. I just put n times 100. The more points created here, the more accurate your answer will be, with the slight trade-off of longer program runtimes. At this point, we are essentially done finding our Simpsons 3 8 rule and the associated maximum error. I'm just going to add a small fprint statement that returns our results. Now that we have completed finding our Simpsons 3 8 rule, let's begin working on graphing our solution as well. I will begin by creating the function that we are solving for. Then I will just add this to our matplotlib plot, like so. Running our program, you can see our plotted polynomial, but this isn't all we want. So let's create a while loop that says while j, our iterating variable from earlier, is in the range of our number of subintervals, do the following. It will select our first and fourth data point and create 25 equal subsections between them. Then, using scipy's interpolate function, it will fit a 1D cubic. I will leave a link in the description down below to a video that describes how to use this scipy function in more detail. Then, we are going to add this four point cubic to our matplotlib graph. Then optionally, I'm going to add a line that will fill in underneath our cubic as we are approximating integrals. This alpha argument here is basically just the opacity of our fill. Then we need to iterate our j variable. Now, running our program, you can get a great visualization of how the Simpsons 3 8 rule works and the cubics that are used in approximating the definite integral. Additionally, if you want to visualize more of the function on your matplotlib graph, you can simply adjust our lower and upper bounds on this bit of code here. And there we go. We have just coded a cool Simpsons 3 8 rule Python code that can approximate a definite integral using the Simpsons 3 8 rule. Find the Simpsons 3 8 rule maximum error and provide you with a handy graph visualizing the information. I hope that this video helped your understanding of how to code Simpsons 3 8 rule in Python. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, or consider checking out our YouTube memberships by clicking that join button down below. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.